Get the seat off. There's a clip that clips under the back here, but there's a problem. It doesn't actually have a battery in it right now. Maybe they got taken and to get charged and not put back. But uh, without a battery, it won't turn over. And I believe this is a six volt, and I don't have a spare six volt motorbike battery. So we'll have to go and find one, bring it back in, and try again. Well, it's the next time I'm down at the shack having another go at this quad bike. I need to sort out what's what and like, you know, where the oil filler is and how to actually start the thing. Looks like there's a oil dipstick there. But you might remember last time there was no battery in the seat compartment, so We've actually managed to hunt it down and get a new one, so I'll be putting that in shortly and seeing if she turns over. But I might as well check the oil and a few other things first. So I've managed to work out this is kind of a gear lever from high to, I'm guessing, low. And in the middle it's disengaged, but it's hard to tell how it actually works, there's not much instructions, but let's just check the oil. If I can get it off, yep. So because it has an oil dipstick, I'm guessing it's a four stroke. And that, if you can see it is halfway up. So I'm not sure if it's meant to be full, but half is better than zero. So I might top a little bit more in there. It looks pretty clean too. Like I said, this is this bike got repaired and cleaned up and was working and then sat in the front of a person's house for more than a year or so and the battery went flat. And then we had to replace it. I found the carburetor. It's way in there. And that's gonna be awkward to get at. So I'll only need to look into that if there's sort of fuel issues. It's like in under everything under the tank and if I need to go and check the bowl, that'll be quite a, quite a journey. So we'll see how she goes before I get to that stage. Need to find the spark plug actually. Back on the other side of the engine again, I'm gonna say this thing is the spark plug. If I can, I need to try and get that out of there and see if it's in good shape or not. I managed to find a spark plug tool in this little toolkit under the seat. So that looks dirty but not oily. And the contact points look clean, so it has been run. Anyway, I'm going to clean that up and put it back in. There's the plug all cleaned up. I was actually thinking I might leave the plug out so that uh, when I put the battery in it, I can try and turn it over without anything holding up the compression of the engine hope. So hopefully it'll turn over a bit easier. I might actually squirt a bit of um, uh, three in one into the chamber before I start any of that. So the next step will be fitting this battery in. One of the problems in tying the battery down, it fits in pretty well. I might pad it with some a rag or something, but these straps are meant to hold it in place from moving around and each of the straps has a split end where the buckle goes through, so they're kind of useless. So I'll get something later on, but for the meantime, I'm just gonna use some, some thick wire and tie it in place. So there we go, the battery's all 
um, padded in place now and I've made this temporary tie. It's not too pretty, but it'll hold it from jumping about. So I'll just neaten this up a bit. And they'll never know the difference. So now I just need to connect up the terminals and see if there's any power to this thing. I checked the battery, it's still got 12.8 volts, it's in good shape. So the battery's all connected and the fuse didn't blow, which is good. The next thing will be trying to find out the right way to start this thing and to see if it turns over. So we'll just have to put the seat on, try a few things and see which combination of switches actually turns this thing over and hopefully we get some noise out of it. It's got oil, the plug is out still, new battery. It's, it should be in neutral. Yeah. So we've got the key on this side. I think there's probably a lockout in the handle to prevent it starting. So I'm in neutral, as I said. Let's see. No. Okay. This is the starter. And you need to hold the brake closed while pressing the button to start it. So I put the spark plug back in the cylinder. It turned over pretty good. I put the spark plug back in the cylinder. I was trying to work out what petrol I put in, but you know, if you read the signs, it's pretty easy. So it's just normal petrol, which I gathered because it had an oil dipstick, which means it's a normal four stroke and not a two stroke engine. So I'm just about to fire it up and see if it works. It's still in neutral, hopefully. So it shouldn't shoot off anywhere. Okay, let's see if this baby will start, eh? Hey? So it's got petrol now, it's in neutral, key is on, that's the dipstick and the throttle, so let's see if she starts. It's probably take a while to get the petrol through in the first time, the, the tank was pretty dry. Is there maybe some fuel fuel switch that I haven't found yet? Let's have a look for that. Well, unfortunately, it looks like there's a fairly good fuel leak at the carburetor on the fuel line heading into the carburetor because it seems to be just falling out the bottom of it and I can't tell if it's a seal or if the overflow is blocked open by some other crud. But it's got a pretty good leak and a lot of that leak is going over the exhaust and I don't need a fire well. Well, as a bit of an update, I have disconnected the battery so that there's no sparks and it doesn't go up in flames, all the fuel on the floor. I have removed all of the fairings and managed to get the carburetor out with quite a lot of swearing and fighting. But I have it here in my hot little hands now. But to be quite honest with you, I've had enough for today of this little thing. So I am going to look at it tomorrow morning and see what's up with it. But yeah, it was leaking all the way around the case somewhere. And my guess is the float bowl is getting full because the float is not floating properly and it's getting just too full of fuel. So we will sort that in the morning. Thanks for hanging in me. Well, it's the next day now and I'm feeling a little more refreshed to look at this carburetor problem. It's not one that I'm familiar with. It's a Honling brand. I'm not sure if you can see that. Honling. Uh, my guess is that as well as some loose and hard fuel lines and leaky ends, 
I think that the float may be stuck and it was just overflowing with fuel and uh, wasn't draining out except onto the engine. The inside of it, from what I can see, is very clean. If you can see in there, very clean. So I'm going to take the bowl off and have a look, see what I've seen. Hopefully not wreck any gaskets while I'm in the process because I don't have any material to make gaskets up. I mean, if it's not, if it's not the carburetor bowl and it's not the lines and the fuel and it's some leak in the body of the carburetor and I don't have much chance of fixing it all the way out here, but let's have a look. So that looks very clean in there. Bit of crud down the bottom, but I think I might be able to clean that out. I mean, it almost looks like a new carburetor. Seals good. So yeah, this, this line goes to like a overflow drain line that I found out after the fact when I was taking this all apart because it just all drained out onto me. but that's clear, I can blow through there. And this one isn't used, so it's blocked off. Okay, bowl's okay. Well, the float does not look stuck. And all of this looks very clean. And the needle, the float uh, needle in here, I can see, is moving up and down. I don't know if I can get that on camera there. But it's moving up and down quite freely. And the floats themselves are not full of anything, he says, dropping it all to the ground. I mean, that pin came out a lot easier than I expected it. I didn't expect it to just fly out. There was not a lot for me to really do here. The rest of it is all clean. I might just check if the, if it all moves inside, which it seems to. Let's put the bowl back on. Okay. Yeah, there's not much for me to trick here, so I'm going to hope that it was just some um, leaky fuel lines, because it all seems good. That's kind of the worst problem, is when you can't find a problem. Yeah, there's no... It's all tight around... All that seal, and they're all as tight as you'd want them. Right, well.
I'm just going to replace a few more deteriorated uh, lines that have gone hard or bad and connect it all up again and see if it works without leaks and then we'll try and refire it up again. Well, unfortunately for this project, the answer is nope. I uh, hooked it all back up and I was just uh, adding a bit of fuel in the tank. Just loosely fitted to see if there's any leaks and there's some sort of leak at the bottom of the carburetor in here, which I think is around the seal. It's hard to tell. That is wet. So that's dripping down. Also, it's making the exhaust very wet. I can't tell if that's just running through the engine or running around the engine body. Not without taking all the covers off. And also, there's a drip here, which is underneath the air box. And when I opened the air box before, there was fuel in it, and I can't work out why fuel would be running from the carburetor into the air box. So, I can't fix this while I'm here. And unfortunately, that means that I'll just have to drain the tank and put it all roughly back into place, leave the battery disconnected and think about what we can do. Perhaps put a carburetor kit through, take the engine covers off, but for now we're gonna stop the video and hopefully pick it up when I'm able to fix it further. Hi everyone, well we're back again looking at this quad bike. It's uh, been about a month since I last put this to bed, trying to work out what was wrong. And I think I've come up with what might be going on. So it was leaking um, when there wasn't any engine turning over. And that's weird because this, this um, fuel switch, fuel cock, um, only works on engine vacuum. So I think that the diaphragm inside or the, something inside of it has failed and fuel is just leaking straight past it. So I've got a replacement and we're going to replace this and see what's going on. I think what fuel is doing is actually going down the vacuum hose behind it and entering into the manifold and that's why I was entering into the air box but I couldn't work out how fuel was getting into the air box. Anyway, we're going to replace this and see if we can improve things. I've also got some, some better um, Hoses, and so we'll be just updating all of that at the same time. All right. Oh, yeah, there's a big uh, hole in the bottom of this hose. Where does that connect to? It goes into this Y shaped connector. That's interesting. Where does that other line go? So this Y connector, that bit goes, that bit goes to this, the back of the switch or the fuel cock and the other end gets dumped straight into the carb but that's not where we want fuel to go we want fuel to go in this one into the bowl I need to replace this and I replace that hose and hopefully we'll see what can happen It's the uh, this is the old one. This is the new one. Maybe I will write in and out on this one. So in.
Yeah, see, I can't blow through this one, whereas this one's just open. So I think fuel is coming in, straight out of the air vent hose, going around into the body of the carburetor, just flooding it immediately. All right, let's replace that. Okay, good news, there's no fuel leaks with the new fuel cock in place. I've uh, just put the front fairing on because it's got the ignition switch, key switch, and I've just reconnected the battery up. So I'm going to put the seat on it and see if it'll fire up. Let's see if it'll turn over. The battery's looking alright. It's out of gear. That's the brakes, and I know the brakes work. It's on. spark plug again. It could have been fouled from all the other attempts I was trying, but no fuel leaks, which is good. Yeah, I'm just going to have a look at the spark plug again. So the plug was a bit dirty, so we'll try it again now. Clean plug. I can't remember if I checked for spark a couple of months ago. If I don't get any joy this time, I'll have to See if there's actually any spark at the spark plug. We've well, certainly fixed the fuel leak problem. Spark, so I'll have to test that. Could be it's a bad plug. It's clean now, but it could be bad. Okay, well, there's plenty of spark. I can see uh, a lot of spark from the spark plug, so the ignition system's working fine. So I put the spark plug back in, I've dropped a little bit of fuel down into the cylinder itself. Hopefully it'll encourage it to actually fire up. So let's see if we get any luck. Well, let's start at something. Come on, baby. It's close.
might be actually out of fuel. <laughs> anyway, let me just see what's going on, but it's a good sign. It's started up. Hopefully we can get it out on the field and see how it goes. It certainly has forward and back and the brakes work, so. Good times. Okay, let's see if I can wheel this thing out of here. Staying along and watching me uh, fix this thing. It's a bit of fun, it's dangerous as hell. Maybe we'll give it a paint job, who knows? Thanks, I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.